Let's talk about a franchise I haven't spoken about in a hot minute, shall we? Now, I've mentioned before that I haven't really read a lot of manga. In fact, I've only gone all the way through the following. Battle Royale, Battle Angel Alita and its sequel Last Order, the first half of Chainsaw Man, Fist of the North Star, Gundam Crossbone, which by the way, my editor shirt dude is doing a deep dive on his channel that you should go check out, Magical Girl Apocalypse, which was fucking weird, some of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Hideout, a few of Junji Ito's stories, and of course, Berserk. However, the number of manga that I've read pales to the amount of Western comics that I've read, but there is one manga, above all, that means the world to me more than any other, even more so than Berserk. It's probably one of my biggest influences as a writer, and is to this day the only manga that I went out of my way to buy the omnibus for, and that is Devilman. What I'm holding in my hands in the picture you're seeing right now might be one of the most influential manga of all time that is penned by easily the most influential mangaka of all time in Go Nagai. I mean, when you think of everything that the man has influenced, he may as well be considered the godfather of manga if he isn't already. He helped pioneer Mecha as we know it with Mazinger Z. He helped pioneer Magical Girl stuff with Cutie Honey. And years before we had Mad Max and Fist of the North Star, which Mad Max is the manga, but you get my meaning, he helped pioneer the post-apocalypse genre with Violence Jack. He even helped pioneer the ecchi genre with Kekko Kamen, which was apparently made to give the middle finger to people who wanted him to censor his work. What a fucking giga chad. He's also inspired famous artists as well. Ken Ishikawa, who created Get a Robo with Gonagai, was one of his assistants. Takahiro Kimura, the animation director for G Gundam and Gaugaigar, named Nagai as one of his biggest influences. Other names inspired by Gonagai include Yoshihiro Nishimura, who is the director of Tokyo Gore Police, Gurren Lagan and Kill the Kill writer Kazuki Nakashima, Madoka Magica co-creator and writer of Psycho Pass and Fate Zero, Gen Urobuchi, and then probably the biggest names he influenced were easily Evangelion creator Hideaki Anno and Berserk creator, the late Kentaro Miura. Now with Devilman being such a massive influence to the arts in Japan, as you'd guess there's been adaptations of this work. There was originally a 39 episode anime called Devilman that aired on Japanese television, but it's not that faithful to the source material. It's more or less a tokusatsu style show, but in animation. It's not really meant to be much else than a Monster of the Week show. What I will say though is that Devilman no Uta, its theme song, is a goddamn earworm. Granted, the best version of it is the one by Kensuke Ushio for Devilman Crybaby. Speaking of Devilman Crybaby, that's another adaptation of Devilman that was quite popular when it came out, directed by Masaki Yuasa. I did review it when it came out, but if you guys would like me to go over it again like I did with Spawn the Animated Series, please do let me know. I will take an excuse to watch Devilman Crybaby again, trust me. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about a few different OVAs from back in the 90s based around Devilman. Specifically, we're going to be discussing The Birth, The Demon Bird, and then finally, Ammon, Apocalypse of Devilman. So, Devilman's first two OVAs are written and directed by Umanosuke Ida, whose name might ring a bell if you've been watching my Gundam videos, which hopefully you have by this point. This is the same guy who directed the latter half of Gundam the O8MS team. He's also the guy who wrote the manga adaptation in Gundam Ace from 2007 to 2009. He also was the director for the Helsing TV series as well, which is a show that I honestly feel gets a little too much flack, but I will freely admit that Helsing Ultimate is much better. But we'll go over that sometime in the future, because I really do want to do a long video about Helsing. Anyway, the first two OVAs with The Birth and The Demon Bird are basically incredibly accurate retellings to the first few arcs in Devilman which are called The Devil's Resurrection, The Harpy Serene, and The Terror of Jinmen. Though, the order of the stories is mixed up a bit. In the manga, it goes Devil's Resurrection, because that's the origin story, The Harpy Serene, and then The Terror of Jinmen. But in the OVAs, the first OVA is still Devil's Resurrection, but the second OVA is Terror of Jinmen, and then that story is before The Harpy Serene instead of after it. As for Ammon, Apocalypse of Devil Man, it's very loosely based on another manga that Gonagai wrote and Yuki Natani illustrated called Ammon, The Dark Side of Devil Man. Now I haven't read the manga version, but from what I've heard, the manga and the OVA are wildly different. What both versions come out to be are retellings of the final big arc in Devil Man, 
which often just gets summarized by the name Armageddon. Fun fact for you guys at home, in the manga, our hero, Akira Fudo, actually breaks the fourth wall to tell the audience that things are going to get super fucked up, and what happens next is not for the faint of heart. Anyway, this OVA is directed by Kenichi Takeshita, who has done a few episodes of different anime here and there, but is probably most known for directing six episodes of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, and the DVD recut of it that focuses on The Laughing Man called The Laughing Man. The scriptwriter is Ritsuka Hayasaka, who is mostly known for writing some of the screenplays for Rosario Plus Vampire, but also being the writer for Raideen the Superior of the Brave franchise. Now, from a technical standpoint, I honestly have nothing but good things to say about all three of these OVAs. The thing that's pretty consistent about a lot of these 90s OVAs is you're going to get really quality animation, probably a pretty bitchin' soundtrack, but a really shitty English dub. More on the dub here in a second. But across all three OVAs, you're going to be pretty pleased with what your eyes are seeing. And not just because Serene is topless, or just in general that the OVAs aren't shy about nudity, because, I'll be honest, the... Source material is not shy about nudity either. It's more just the fluidity of the animation, which can actually take that nudity you coomers out there love so much and give you some fucking nightmares with it. Yeah, there's literally a sequence where some titties turn into mouths with teeth. It's a boob guy's worst nightmare. Anyway, great animation, to say the least, a fun soundtrack, and the voice acting in the Japanese is really well done on top of it. Sho Hayami is the voice of our hero, Akira Fudo. He's mostly known for his work as Burn Burnings in Aura Battle or Dunbine, Gavlet in Heavy Metal Elgheim. Wait, those are dated references, and there's a lot of Zoomers out there. Alright, for you fucking Zoomers who only know recent anime, he's the voice of Vanilla Ice in JoJo Stardust Crusaders. Anyway, Ryo is played by Yu Misujima, who voiced Nightheart Muller in Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Orion Jaeger in Saint Seiya the Movie, and... Fuck, I gotta give something for the Zoomers. Uh, he was Napoleon in One Piece. I don't know who Napoleon is in One Piece, and I don't really care. Just know that he was in that, because everybody who's a fucking Zoomer tells me to read One Piece, and I'm not going to, because it honestly doesn't look that good. No, I don't care if you tell me that it's good. I don't really care about it. I hate the art style. Anyway, Miki Makimura is credited in this anime as being voiced by Jun Koyamaki, whose name isn't going to come up with much if you look her up. It's because it's a pseudonym. Her real name is Sunagana Takio, and was probably most well known for appearing in Shadow Warriors, which was one of the shows that influenced Kill Bill, and Kamen Rider Black RX. As for Serene, she deserves a special mention when it comes to her VA. She's voiced by Yoshiko Sakakibara. She's a voice actress known for being in God Mars, God Mazinger, and is the voice of Sir Integra Wingate's Helsing in, well, Helsing. However, those of us who are Gundam fans will know that rather sultry voice for one specific character above all, Haman Karn. <coughs> what the fuck? What was that? <coughs> <coughs> fuck, I got something flaring up. It feels like I'm going to explode. God damn it! Haman's Hey, don't judge me. Short hair, wide hips, nice voice. I'm a sucker for all three. I also mentioned the English dub earlier. The best word that can sum up the dub of the show is hilarious. The worst word being terrible. This is one of those English dubs from the 90s that is the prime example of throwing in profanity to seem edgy and cool. It's basically a 16-year-old's idea of what, you know, dictates mature. Or Zack Snyder's idea of what dictates mature. There are parts in this where they have characters cursing basically for the sake of cursing. Sort of like Shia LaBeouf's character in iRobot. And on top of that, they have some of the characters being considerably raunchier or more vulgar than they are in the source material. Now, it's not as bad as the I'm a banana line from Angel Cop. But you need to listen to this because it's going to make you laugh your ass off. Fuck you! Huh? Okay, open the door and let's take a swing at the motherfuckers. Fucking hellfire! I'll soap your tits for you. Whoa, hey. <laughs> now listen here, Rio. If you ever say that again, I'll rip your fucking head off and shit down your neck, okay? Satan has sent me to help you. Meld with me. Uh, what the hell is this? Some kind of a shit for brains joke? I'm no longer Ammon. He's eating shit in hell right now! 
That'd give the bastard something to think about for sure. Now here's the tricky part. It's not that easy to talk about Devil Man because it's such a legendary story. I kind of fall into the same trap that I did when I reviewed the original Mobile Suit Gundam because I'm not sure what I can say and what I can't say that isn't going to be considered a spoiler to most people. Keep in mind that this is an OVA series that's 30 years old, and its source material is even older than that. So what I'm going to do is, since I know most of my audience is about 10 or more years younger than me, I'm just going to assume that nobody or very few of you have ever read Devilman or watched these OVAs. Just know that I'm a big fan, and I have nothing but great things to say about them. So when I get to spoiler time, just bugger off and go read the manga. You'll definitely enjoy it. And maybe I'll do a full-on review of the manga at some point. I don't know, I haven't really thought too much about getting back into reviewing pure print mediums instead of, you know, video shit. Anyway, Devil Man is a story about a young man named Akira Fudo, who's a bit of a wuss. Okay, that's an understatement. His nickname is the Fire Alarm of Inaguma High because of how often he cries. He's joined by his best friend and love interest, Miki Makimura, as they go through some difficulties at their high school, such as bullies being sick bastards and killing his rabbits. It basically serves as an introduction to the characters that we're going to be dealing with, basically for the rest of Devilman. Akira is joined later on by his friend Ryo, who he has apparently known since he was a child. What follows next after this opening segment is Ryo taking Akira through a gauntlet of hell, quite literally, showing the young crybaby that demons have found their way to the mortal realm. First, Ryo's father was possessed, and there are other stories of possession that he's seen and heard of, on top of having possession of a devil mask that, when putting it on, lets you see through the eyes of a demon, which gives some pretty screwed up visions to say the least. What you see is a lot of what can best be described as Darwinism on a heroin. You're seeing some of the imagery in front of you on the unedited version of this particular video. If you're not seeing the unedited version, you ought to consider becoming a patron slash subscribe star dude. Links are in the description. Now, am I using blood and violence to try to entice you to give me money? Yes. Yes, I am. And I'm completely shameless about it. Anyway, Ryo realizes that there needs to be something done to combat this impending invasion from hell, and the best way that you're going to do that is by taking the powers of the demons and using them as your own. The goal is essentially for Akira to be turned into something called a devil man. Now, what pray tell is a devil man, you might ask? Well, it's basically someone with the powers of a demon, but with the mind and soul of a human. Akira himself is exceptionally powerful because the demon that he does merge with in this particular story, because I mean, it's called Devil Man, it's obvious that that's what happens, is a demon named Ammon, also known as the Lord of War. He's exceedingly powerful, and now you can see how everything gets tied together, because, of course, the third OVA about Devil Man before Devil Man Crybaby came out was called Ammon Apocalypse of Devil Man. The one thing I should mention before I start going into story specifics is that there is a significant jump in events when you go from the Demon Bird to Ammon Apocalypse of Devil Man. The first two OVAs are meant to be gateways to the manga, which was a pretty common thing during the 90s. Honestly, how I would recommend taking these in is watch these first two OVAs if what I'm about to tell you sounds cool. And then, of course, watch them in Japanese unless you're looking for a good laugh. But see if you enjoy them. They're just great overall horror stories with fantastic tension and surprisingly good action. Devil Man is a manga with tremendous imagery and knows how to keep you on the edge of your seat, and the OVA is capable of doing the exact same thing. Now, one thing that I have to mention is that these OVAs, like I said, they are a sampler platter of this. The characters are very engaging in this. You're going to like Miki because of her tomboyishness and her I don't give a shit attitude. You're going to like Akira Fudo because even though he starts out as a coward, his willingness to put himself out there and essentially say, yeah, I'm willing to potentially sacrifice my soul to protect people is incredibly heroic. And then Ryo is an interesting wild card character in the sense you never quite know what he's up to. He always seems 
at least at the start, like he's trying to do the right thing or what he defines as good, but sometimes his morality isn't black and white like Akiro's or Miki's is, it's more like orange and purple. The other great thing about this is that in these OVAs, even though they are very action heavy, the fact that the dialogue is as cool as it is and the imagery is so well realized, not really being kind of your typical demons and angels sort of look that you would get out of something from the Middle Ages or, you know, Catholic inspired literature, things of that nature, but rather takes new and inventive elements on it. It really paints a picture of its own interesting take on essentially what a demon would look like and creates in and of itself its own demonology. One thing I'll freely admit is that Gonagai's version of hell in the manga is my favorite fictionalized version of hell ever. I say that as somebody who of course has read the Divine Comedy and loves the Doom games, but they had none of them touch. Not even Agony, that game, which the only good thing about it was its art style, that doesn't even touch how Gonagai presents hell. But it has its own demonology, it has its own theories on how exactly to do this sort of thing and how to tell this kind of a story, but more than anything, the story is about people. It's about humanity, it's about the things that make people what they are, and essentially boils down as the story goes on, how exactly we respond to crises. But a lot of that is in the manga. You sadly don't get those notes in the first two OVAs. Now you do get it in Ammon, but that's largely because it's a rewrite of the very end of the story of Devilman, which I can't go over any details with you because it's a fucking spoiler. So needless to say, with these OVAs, you're gonna get great animation, you're gonna get great sound design, you're gonna get great Japanese voice acting, you're gonna get hilarious English voice acting, and overall, if you are a horror fan, especially if you like things that are kind of action-y horror, you're really gonna like this. Because though it, of course, has the horror elements, it is a horror story, the fight between Selene and Devilman, and the fights between Devilman and some of the monsters honestly come across as very much like something that you would see out of a Wolverine comic, or something maybe out of Marvel Max back in the day, or even something like Invincible, at least in regards to the blood and guts. So, with that said, do I recommend Devilman? I recommend almost everything Devilman, to be honest with you. It is probably my favorite story to ever come out of Japan. As a writer, it's one of my biggest influences. Anybody who read my comic book, Three Nights, Four Days, you can tell that I am a big, big, big fan of Gonagai and the sort of atmosphere that he presents, as is my artist on that book, Preston Acevedo. It's one of the areas that he and I really clicked on. Okay, from here on, it's spoiler time. Thing is, I'm not going to be breaking down the OVAs for the Birth and Demon Bird for a couple reasons. First off, Sure Dude just edited a video for me that's an hour and a half of Gundam Deep Dive. He's going to be doing another one after this one, and currently he looks like this. So we're going to give the guy a little bit of a break by me reiterating that the first two OVAs are spot-on representations of the Devilman manga. Go watch them. And if you like them, go read the manga, and then come back, and then you can listen to me talk about Ammon. Now, Ammon Apocalypse of Devilman is something I haven't talked about much up to this point, because it's all a spoiler. If you watch these OVAs, it's sort of like watching the first couple episodes of Game of Thrones Season 1, and then if you watch Ammon after that, it would be like skipping to the end when Ned Stark gets the worst haircut ever. You're going to be really confused as to what the fuck is going on. In this particular case, I'm assuming that people have read the manga and have seen how that ends with the cycle of destruction and rebirth that God has been torturing Satan with beginning again. Yep, that's why I said read the manga. You're probably going to feel like, what the fuck did you just say by, well, skipping the manga? You wouldn't guess that that's the ending from the first two OVAs. Now, there's an entire section of the manga where the world basically goes nuts because the demonic invasion is worldwide at that point. However, Akira is not the only devil man in existence, just the only one with his particular power set because of the demon he merged with. 
One such set of devil men are Mikiko Kawamoto, or Miko for short, and Yumi, who bait a demon in the alley and melt him with Miko's toxic titties. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. That's her power. Her boobs shoot acid. So does her vagina. God, poor woman has no sex life, most likely. Well, it doesn't work well, and the demon reforms himself, and we're treated to a rather uncomfortable beatdown after he reconstitutes himself. Then, Akira shows up and fucks him up. One thing that makes this particular OVA stand out is how it treats violence. It goes out of the way to make you feel sick, because it doesn't treat it with much dramatic flair. There's no dramatic music, no nothing. Just you watching people fucking die. It has all of the impact of a live leaks video, essentially. You don't need to add something dramatic to it. The violence is essentially selling itself. Or rather, the impact of the violence is just something that it lets you absorb without trying to make it more or less than what it is. The violence should disgust you, given the context you're seeing it in and how blunt it's presented. Anyway, the story keeps following the manga, with Ryo, at this point, revealed to be Satan himself, showing the world not just the existence of devils, because they already know that, but also that Akira is Devil Man. Immediately as this happens, Miki's house is attacked. Her little brother is murdered, once again, rather bluntly. And this is what I mean about the violence here being very blunt, very matter-of-fact, no dramatics, just death. And you're treated to an uncomfortable and horrifying sequence of Miki Makimura's final moments. As unsettling as this sequence is, this is some of the best horror you're ever going to see in anime. How it leads up to the reveal of what these monsters did to Miki's little brother, and then the beginning of what happens to Miki herself, and then the aftermath of it, is just fucking gut-wrenching. It is scary, it is gut churning but it is emotionally powerful if you have a connection to these characters which if you've read the manga you're going to from here you start to see the worst parts of humanity as the world goes nuts women are dragged off to be raped riots are breaking out and akira goes to check on miki only to be far far too late by the way up to this point this is pretty spot on to what happens in the original manga at this point akira turns into devil man and mercilessly slaughters the crowd that killed the woman he loved. This image of Akira holding Miki's head is probably one of the most iconic images in all of horror manga and anime. It is purely heartrending. If I may take a second, I have to say that Devil Man is one of those stories that is completely unafraid to pull at all of your emotions. This is also an example where you need the context of the Devil Man manga as a whole to really feel the full impact. Throughout the story, you get attached to Miki and Akira, seeing their relationship blossom and hoping that these two are going to get there happily ever after, despite the odds of it. You want to believe that this kid bound to a demon can win the day, and his beliefs and his pure heart are going to stay intact. Then this happens, and it all falls away. This is a sequence that pulls away all hope from the viewer. Miki's dead. Her and her brother were butchered as a mob of madmen fucking laughed about it. In retaliation, Akira returned the mob's violence in kind, but completely loses his faith in humanity, giving in to the demonic side of his new nature. It fucking hurts to watch, and in revisiting this OVA, I admittedly, when I wrote this script, had stopped so I could go ahead and summarize everything that I saw and how I was feeling about it. I first read through Devil Man way back in 2016. Wait, way back? God, is, it's, oh God, it's been eight years. But anyway, eight years later, I still get misty-eyed looking at the image of Akira holding Miki's head close, seeking all of their hopes and dreams and all of the audience's hopes and dreams for them die in a sea of blood as Psycho Jenny and Satan himself look on. Whew! All right, let's keep going. From here, the Devilman Corps, who are a group of devil men Akira put together to try and fight back against the demons, are getting fuck-stomped by the demons at this point because they've dominated the planet. A small number comes into the building that Akira is in at the time as he's mourning Miki's death and just hanging out with her head there, challenging him to fight or submit. I'd like to say that he chooses to fight, but he doesn't. Ammon chooses for him, taking over his body. Ammon then fights with the Jabber demons, and it goes about as you'd expect. Ammon tears them to pieces, like an afterthought. Oh, and the little girl devil man that Miko protected earlier? 
the one that, you know, Akira stopped the ambush of very early on in the OVA, he fucking eats her. Once again, full-on, matter-of-fact violence. Just picks her up and starts chowing down on her like she's a fucking corn cob. You hear every chomp, every splash of blood, etc. Nothing super dramatic, it just fucking happens and it leaves you there to digest what the fuck is going on. This OVA is fucking brutal. Anyway, Ammon goes back to the blue demon with the dreadlocks wanting to know where Satan is. That conversation goes nowhere, as expected, and a battle breaks out between the two. And, for as brief as it is, it's pretty good. Trains get thrown through skyscrapers, skyscrapers get blasted to pieces, and overall it feels like a battle between a couple of supervillains. Well, until Ammon stops fucking around and just punches a giant hole in the guy. Welcome, punch! The rest of the story is a journey inside the mine that shows the struggle between Ammon and Akira, with Ammon taunting Akira by showing him Miki's brutal death at the hands of the mob, the parts that we didn't see. Then, the two throw down for who gets control of Akira's body. Another damn good fight as well, though admittedly at points it gets so brutal that it's a little hard to watch. Ammon takes the early lead in it, beating the piss out of Akira, ripping off one of his wings, choking him to the point where his neck sprays blood, etc. And then we get another sequence in Akira's head, where he tells Miki's spirit that he feels completely responsible for her death, basically saying that he killed her. Well, what does Miki's spirit respond with? She kisses him. She doesn't say a word. Just lets Akira know that even though she's gone, she's always going to love him. Ammon makes fun of Akira as he cries because Ammon's a cunt. They fight again and Akira takes control by using his mind to throw Ammon backwards. That's telekinesis, Kyle. He even pulls a guile from Street Fighter and fucking gives Ammon a flash kick. Then Ammon impales Akira on his fist, which ends up being a bad move, because Akira realizes that he's not trapped there with Ammon. Ammon is trapped there with him. At this point, he just keeps Ammon there as he's impaled, and just beats the dude's face into hamburger. He takes his fucking time with it too, because I guess he doesn't need a chunk of his spine to do his best impression of a piston firing at max speed. Akira regains control of his body after killing Ammon and crashes to the earth, and at this point the planet's in absolute ruin. Akira spends time by his lonesome, kneeling in front of Miki's headband. As Satan comes to him, the two meet each other's gaze. No words are spoken, because words aren't needed. No punches are thrown, no nothing. Akira just walks away, letting Ryo stand there in the messy nade. He can't tell why me gushing about it, I really like Apocalypse of Devil Man. I think it's a really poetic ending to the story of Devil Man. Now in the manga, what we often see is many Devil Man stories and how the world ends and the whole new world is, of course, reborn so that God can torment Satan by having to relive the loss of his friend over and over again. Well, this time it's different. Everything that Ryo did in betraying Akira caused Akira to lose everything. But after Akira goes and manages to defeat Ammon for control of himself, he takes the only thing that Ryo had left from him, and that was Akira's friendship. Satan doesn't get to die in this one. He doesn't get to relive his entire existence. He has to stay alive and live with what he did, surrounded by the fruits of his labors. Nice job, you blonde dipshit. You broke it all, now you gotta live with it. So, to close this out, all of these OVAs get a glowing recommendation from me, but they really serve to be an accompaniment to the main manga rather than something standalone. We actually wouldn't see the entire Devilman saga adapted from the manga until Devilman Crybaby, and even then it's not a one-to-one -one adaptation, but rather a modernization with a few major differences in the tone. Still great, and if people want me to revisit it sometime, let me know in the comments. I may even get around to reviewing some of the side stories as well, such as Devilman Grimoire and Devilman Lady. Anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine, and if you want to support the channel, subscribe, star, and Patreon options are in the description. My name is Micah Curtis, your favorite vanilla gorilla, and I'll see you next time.